Yeah, this is the last time I'm going to see this thing running off the carburetors because soon I'll be ripping the carburetors off. Okay, <clears throat> this is one of the first things we've got to do because nothing works without this. Uh, <clears throat> this is the pickup sensor for the crank sensor and <clears throat> right now it's a stock Kawasaki part. However, it, it won't uh, work with the, the 64 or 36 tooth wheel that I've got. And uh, so I have to rework it. And what I'm going to do is, is pretty much destroy it because all I need out of it is that bracket that holds it on. And I'm going to construct uh, another part to go in there that's got a Hall Effect uh, sensor built into it. And I'm just going to use the... Uh, this is as a uh, the bracket to hold it in. Uh, you can see I got the back side off, and that's where the bracket is. The bracket is an L shape, and then it goes down to these two little ears. So I need to take all the rest of this plastic and uh, the coil that's inside. I need to take that off. And when you get through all the plastic on the back, you find a couple of Phillips screws that you can back out to so help uh, get the magnet out. There's a, a magnet and a coil of copper wire on this side. I've got most of it gone, but the magnet's still there, so I'm just going to unscrew it and see if I can pop it out. Okay, when you're done, you get the magnet and the coil wire off. You're just left with this bracket here, which bolts inside the uh, crankcase. And uh, I'm going to mold. I've already made a mold of this before I tore it apart. And... Uh, I'm going to use this inside the mold just to have something to mount to. And then uh, on this side over here will be my transistor and stuff. And so I'm going to pot the whole thing in epoxy. Okay, this is the ECU that I'm going to use. And uh, this requires a very steady, stable, and uh, no noise signal from the crank position sensor. So. By far, the crank position sensor is the weakest link in this whole system. Uh, if you go to the website for Speedduino and uh, just follow along some of the threads, I'd say 50% of the people that, that go this route have terrible trouble getting the, the sync from the, the crank position sensor. It's either noisy or it's a dropping signal or it's dropping out with one or two teeth. I mean, there's always something to do with this. So rather than buy off-the-shelf stuff, I decided to build my own, and it works great. So uh, this is the mold that I made for my uh, position sensor. This is, I made it off of one of these. This is a Kawasaki crank position sensor. And uh, where's my little, oh, there's my little transistor. This is a actually there's two Hall effect transistors in each one of the, in each device, and I uh, use three wires, uh, ground signal and plus five, plus five only, not twelve because it'll fry it. Okay, <clears throat> I'm starting this guy a little bit because my mold is not that deep, and then I'm going to put a hole in it right in the center so that when I put the epoxy in to pot it that it will hold on to that bracket. So, and you know, I am almost done with this baby. We're good. We're good. Okay, this is the crank position sensor that I'm going to build. And I'm making it from this part here, which is a Hall Effect uh, transistor, or, or sensor, not a transistor. Uh, it's got uh, differential op amps, and it's got two different uh, Hall detectors so that there's no noise and uh, you can actually sense which direction it's it's uh, going but anyhow uh, this is it soldered together pin one is a vcc and pin three and four ground which uh, that's the black wire and then pin two is the blue wire which is the signal out also i put a cap between uh, pins of one and three so that uh, any kind of noise gets in there the resistor though is on the uh, ECU so 
uh, I don't really need to put it this close to this device. So anyhow, I'm going to do some testing, make sure it's working right, and then I'm going to pot it in this uh, this little mold that I made from the existing uh, sensor. I just set it down in a cup and uh, covered it with silicon, and uh, this fits in here just like that, and then a metal bracket fits in here behind that, and. Uh, uh, to hold that in place, I'm going to put a magnet on the back, and to hold the uh, this in place, I'm going to put a magnet on the front. And uh, well, better get testing and see uh, if it's going to work before I do any potting. Okay, I've got all my wiring hooked up to my five volt power supply, and uh, right now the output signal is high. And it should switch to low as I go past one of these teeth. There it went low, and as I go to it, the next tooth goes high. And it should go low again on the next tooth, yeah. So, I believe the circuit is working properly. So, oh, by the way, that's my uh, crank position tooth, or whatever. Uh, that replaces the existing uh, Kawasaki... Uh, one tooth uh, wheel. Okay, uh, this is the resin I'm using. It's a uh, Permatex cold weld and it's got a working time of about four to six minutes and I'm out here in the garage it's colder so I've probably got up to ten minutes before it starts to gel. So anyhow it's got a uh, an ex the maximum temperature between uh, 300 and 380 uh, 300 continuous and 380 intermittent so that should uh, do well in the uh, in a motorcycle crankcase in the oil bath so anyhow the idea is uh, mix the, the, the two parts of the resin uh, outside and then uh, pour it all in here and then push this in and lock it in place and push this deck back in and uh, in the front and lock it in place and then patch up any kind of holes that I made. So here we go. And there it is. I need to wait about an hour to see if it uh, is going to work <laughs> once it's cured. But uh, I'm going to allow it about an hour before I even try to break it out of the mold there. And meanwhile, I'm going to try to tidy up this uh, mess. So, and there it be. Need a little cleanup, but uh, it looks pretty much like the original. <clears throat> well, compared to the original, it looks like that uh, that sensor might be just a little bit low. It may still work, but. Uh, when I put it in the motorcycle, I may have to put a shim underneath, maybe a little washer or something underneath here to kind of lift it up a little bit, because it's not quite where I thought it should be. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to go take it down to the garage and give it the acid test and uh, put it in a real environment. Okay, <clears throat> I got this little rascal mounted in here next to the teeth and got it wired up power and let's see if I spin this real slow look at there all right now if I turn that on I should see 35 teeth and then one missing tooth I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and one missing tooth. So, there you go. 
and it uh, that's it pretty good uh, RPM let's see so I think that's uh, rock solid I may have to to shim this up and up and down just to make sure that it it mates up with the wheel just just right so but uh, I think I'm finished with it now it's time to uh, do the next step